Today, we're going to talk about corporate social responsibility, cost related marketing, and how companies and non profit organizations can work together to develop new products and services that truly can deliver real values to everyone. Hi, I'm Julie Tran, and you're watching Make Change TV. Welcome. I'm here at Who Cares Wins 2012, an event that is organized by YouMeShopping.dk, a newly established non-profit organization from Denmark. More than 200 companies will attend and I'm looking so much to talk to some of the keynote speakers today. But now let me just walk around and talk with some participants, so follow me. CSR, in yep. my view, <coughs> there, there's an old-fashioned way of looking upon it, which mm -hmm. is really more or less charity. Yeah. And that's not the way I look upon it. I look upon it as a partnership mm -hmm. between corporations and NGOs, or anybody else, mm -hmm. but say NGOs. Yeah. It's a partnership between the two, and it is a partnership in which the purpose is to create shared value, yep. which is not only, for instance, if you buy fair trade goods, mm -hmm. you divide the cake in a different way. Mm -hmm but you don't create additional value. No. But if you actually help the coffee growers yep. to, to, uh, to, uh, with using better methods and uh, being more productive, etc., then you are creating additional value. And in my view, that is, C that is the new and coming form of CSR. Okay. But how do you create a partnership between two different business organizations uh, that have different business objectives? That's true. Um, but it starts with a a shared purpose mm. and uh, <coughs> my background yeah. I have a business background but I also have a background within world scouting yeah. and you know scouting is the largest youth organization on yeah. earth and uh, in, in my view uh, the way we should look upon scouting mm. is the greatest leadership development program on earth and uh, it actually it's 10 million young people each year yeah. that's a lot and if you look at a company uh, and say it's a telco or it's a manufacturer, whatever, computer, software, whatever it is, such a company will be very dependent on having access to the best leaders in the world. And that's what scouting produces. They, scouting is the greatest leadership development program and, and actually fosters the type of leaders that this sort of company will need. So they have a shared purpose and they come to the, the party with different resources while the company has resources, uh, they have money, they have, uh, they have know-how about leadership, they have physical uh, uh, premises, uh, they have uh, computer networks, they have everything. While scouting brings its tradition for how to develop young people and it brings actually young people who are uh, in the process of becoming tomorrow's leaders. Yeah. And <coughs> in that partnership, I think it's, it's relatively easy to create a lot of additional value, uh, to make the cake a lot bigger uh, for the benefit of both parties. Yeah. That's CSR. That's CSR. Then, do you think that with the way you see a CSR, is this relevant for every single business, every single industry? Because we still have skeptics, people who still think now that CSR is just, you know, for business that want to have PR out of it. Is this relevant for every single business? Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> and and if, if somebody, thinks of CSR as a PR exercise, mm. I just say, let go. Okay. It's not, not interested. But in my view, every company mm. in the future will have to redefine themselves yep. or itself <coughs> as a movement. So they have to put 
purpose before profit. They yes. may they have to focus on making a difference in mm -hmm. society, and making that difference can be their primary yep. uh, mainstream business, or it can also be something related to the way they do business. <coughs> and um, CSR is is partnering with other parties mm. in creating that shared value and making things happen. Yep. And that's something very different from just uh, just uh, charity or yep. PR. And I think it applies to every single type of business on earth. Okay. So if we have to compare um, Danish companies when it comes to CSR versus you know the rest of the world, how would you view on that? Are I, we ahead or are we behind or how do I you I think see we it? have some really important front runners. I say Novo Nordisk, which mm. is the largest pharmaceutical company yeah. in this part of the world, actually is basically a diabetes company. They're not only in the process of selling insulin, yeah. they're actually doing a lot of other things to, uh, to <coughs> alleviate and prevent diabetes, yeah. which uh, is a wonderful example of a CSR mm. uh, uh, activity. And they're really front runners. Another one, the company I chair, which is Grundfos, yeah. actually also in, as part of their main business, is in the process of transforming themselves from being just sellers of pumps into being providers of clean water yeah. to everyone. Yeah. And that is also a wonderful example and they're really a front runners in that. Yeah. But obviously there's a long tail yeah. of companies who haven't discovered yet. Mm. And uh, we have them in Denmark, we have them uh, elsewhere. But I actually think that there are shining examples. Lego yeah. uh, for children, really wonderful example. And there are quite a few. So how do you see the development of CSR 10 years from now? I think while most companies <coughs> today look upon CSR mm. as a side business, something you know nice to have, yeah. they will uh, in 10 years time look upon it as need to have. Mm. It is a part of the mainstream strategy mm. and it is something that they couldn't imagine yeah. being without. Okay, that's great. Now let's move to another direction because from your speech um, you talked about unboss, which I find very fascinating. So can you explain about that? What yes. is unboss? Uh, the, uh, the, 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 com the, the, the leader of today is the boss mm -hmm. and the boss will uh, perform his functions, say he, yeah. will perform his functions through a hierarchy using a power structure. Yeah. That's the, the essence of, of, of being a boss and managing a mm -hmm. business or anything today. Now, the unboss will manage a movement, mm. and this, say, she will actually transform her business into a movement, put okay. the course before the profit, mm. organize it in a more flexible and engaging fashion, involve people that are not even paid or, or mm. uh, employed, involve other people who yeah. are passionate about the course <laughs> into it, and they will create value, yeah. not for customers, but with customers. Okay. And the unboss, is the person mm. that can orchestrate a, a movement like yeah. that and a company like that. And it takes a very different kind of person than the traditional CEO yeah. that you see on TV uh, mm. every uh, night. It's a different type of yeah. person. And my purpose in life is actually to unboss everything. Okay. So I'll unboss Denmark, I'll unboss the world, I'll unboss scouting, I'll unboss anything. Okay. That's what I'm interested in. Yeah. But the way I see it, there, I mean, from my perspective, there's a difference between being a leader, you know, a true sure, inspirational leader sure, and a boss. Sure. So are you talking about, you know, the boss becomes the true leader where she or he, you know, inspires other people and create a movement around their organizations or how do you exactly, see it? Oh. Exactly. The, the, I could have said it is the, the shift from a manager into a leader, yeah. but the, the, this has been said a million times. And it, it's, the word is not rich enough yeah. to, to uh, em encompass the fact that the unboss mm. is an enabler of a movement and involves yeah. partners and other people who are not part of it, the limited company who engages everybody in a, yeah. a, a less hierarchical organization yeah. and creates value together with others. It, it's a much richer concept, mm. which is why I invented a new term for it, yeah. which which is wonderful because it's both a person and it's a verb. It's a process. Yeah. So now we can have a so new business card, more like unboss. Unboss. Yeah. yeah.
taking a very strategic approach, so we think it's very important that you link your CSR strategy to your business strategy yes. and to what you're good at as a, as a business. Yes. And that's why we've actually decided on three strategic themes, which okay. is the climate, it's safety in terms of how can you prevent accidents from happening, yeah. and then the third one is, is health. Yeah. All three areas that we really know something about, because insurance is what we do, so that gives us a certain knowledge that we can activate. Yeah. And then obviously uh, we're also working with different stakeholder groups that could be our customers, our employees, the climate, the community, etc. So we're trying to link a big strategic agenda with also something that's relevant for society. Yeah. From the presentation you also talked a lot about um, that you need to measure you know, the effect yeah. from your CSR. Uh, how do you do that? Well, we do that in, in a lot of ways, but when it comes to s things like climate, then we actually have a CO2 uh, measurement. So four times a year we measure how we are doing on the CO2 side. So we measure how much paper, how much water, uh, electricity and so on and so forth. So, yeah. so we do things like that to make sure we're always on track yeah. and that we meet our targets. Uh, but we also measure other stuff like if it comes to the employee side, uh, how many people do we have who have left us, how many people are sick, etc. Um, are we investing in the right way in our people? Yeah. So it's all about sustainability and the long term and, and to make sure you're always on track, you need to measure and track yeah. how you're doing short term, you can say, so to speak. Yeah. And you also established partnerships with a non-profit organization like WWF. Um, so before you established the, the, the partnership, um, mm. did you think that you know it can be difficult to establish a partnership because you have different objectives when it comes to your business and their vision and, and so on? So how, how do you overcome the challenges? I think it, it's. Um it's quite important when you enter a partnership that you have an open mind and that you're quite clear that actually, yes, we do have, in, in some ways, we do have different targets that we want to achieve. Yeah. But then what binds us together is this big agenda that we want to do something good for society or there's something that we want to change in society. Yeah. Uh, so if you're quite clear about that and open-minded, I think it's, it's pretty easy to overcome. Yeah. But it is something, of course, that you need to discuss and be open about. Yeah. So did it live up to your expectation before you enter? Yeah, okay. very much. And yeah. I think uh, entering into a partnership is, is definitely good for us. It's also good for the NGO because I think coming from different worlds yeah. actually gives us the opportunity to discuss new things. We can inspire each other, but we can also challenge each other. Yeah. Uh, some definitely. things they know better, yeah. some things we know better. And if we mix it all together, yeah. then actually we can achieve a lot together. So, so that's what, it, what is very exciting about it. Come on, girl. Come on girls, in this crazy, crazy world You're the diamonds, you're the pearls Let's make a new tomorrow Come on girls, come on boys It's your future, it's your choice And your weapon is your voice Let's make a new tomorrow Related marketing or cause marketing mm -hmm. is the idea that a business and a cause can team up in a commercial way mm -hmm. for their mutual benefit. Yeah. It takes many, many different forms. Yeah. Sometimes a company will say, we are going to make a contribution each time a consumer buys our product to your cause. Sometimes they will support uh, advertising and other forms of promotion that generate support for, for the group. Uh, many different forms, but it's that basic idea, not of philanthropy, mm. but of working together in a way that benefits both parties. Okay. So you have researched about this for more than 10 years. So where did it start? Well, in the US, it's, it's said that the, the big bang of mm. cause marketing was in about 1983 when American Express created a campaign that offered to make a contribution towards the restoration of the Statue of Liberty uh, every time somebody used their card or applied for a new card. And this idea of appealing to people's desire to give back as opposed to simply wanting to save money or receive a prize uh, was, was somewhat revolutionary and it, it turned out that 
card usage went way up, applications for cards went up, and uh, $1.7 million was raised for the restoration. So that idea uh, took hold, and it's been done in everything from food products to the selling of automobiles. So now looking back at the development uh, during the past you know, 10 or 15 years, how would you characterize that development? Is this more common now in the U.S. Well, that companies do? Yes, it, is, it, is, it, is, it has grown in uh, acceptance. Mm -hmm. There was a time, even when I started my company about 11 years ago, even then the amount of cynicism uh, in the business world mm -hmm. uh, was much higher, where people said, you know, Consumers don't really respond to these ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, as well as in the NGO world, yeah. the level of suspicion, of concern that they really shouldn't be or couldn't be working as partners with business was quite high. Yeah. But over time, more and more cases have proven yeah. that uh, this can be an effective strategy. And more and more people in the NGO world have become uh, educated and more professional about this very specialized field, and that has helped. In addition, the good news and bad news is that the world has only developed more problems mm -hmm. over time, and uh, it's become clearer that, we, that governments can't solve uh, every issue, and so we're, people are looking for new solutions and, and are expecting more from companies, and that all fits together to have elevated this, this field. How do you choose a good course? Uh, the first thing to do is to examine your business and see uh, what, what, are, what are causes that, that resonate with what you do. And what are the issues that you're facing that you'd like a cause platform to help you solve. Clearly, if you are able to find a cause that is logical, a food company fighting hunger, um, a, a, a transportation company helping to get vital materials from one place to another or transporting people in need, um, that makes your communications job a lot easier. Um, and then once you've picked a cause, then you have to determine whether you're going to work with a, a particular NGO, a group of NGOs, or whether you're going to approach the problem with your own solutions and uh, not so much relying on an NGO. When looking at it for a partner, which is very often the wise thing to do, yeah. you need to look and see, is this a group uh, that doesn't have any skeletons in the closet that might cause problems for us yeah. from a public relations point of view? And do they have a culture that embraces the idea that we're going to be working together yeah. and that they're actually able to deliver value just as we must deliver value for them. That's, those are important parts of the process. Mm. So if, you, if we look at um, the bus businesses in the U.S., would you say that it's still big companies you know, that apply course-related marketing? Well, because the, case, the, the, the successful cases that you have mentioned, whether it's Starbucks or, or Macy, I mean, they are big corporations, yes. right? Well, and I think that, I think that this actually works across a very broad spectrum of companies, the ones that we learn about mostly, yeah. and the ones that produce big numbers okay. and are easy to talk about because they're, they're publicized, are for larger companies. Um, so that is certainly true. But in fact, for many small businesses that really are local in their base and have a group of uh, neighbors who are their customers for whom they share a real immediate need for their area to prosper, yeah. there's a, there are tremendous opportunities and many examples of, of small companies that do this as well. Yeah. So now let's us, um, discuss the difference between U.S. and Europe. Um, do you see any difference when it comes to cost related marketing? Well, I, I think that uh, the U.S., the U.K., uh, Canada, cost related marketing is, uh, those are the countries I'm most familiar with and uh, there's quite a lot going on. Um, in other countries, it varies, um, and I think that is because in many countries there are different attitudes uh, about giving to NGOs 
uh, at all. No. Uh, some countries do not have a history mm. of people giving to charity individually and the connection that they should give when they're making uh, purchases or that a comp it's, 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 it's different. But then again, there are many, there are some great examples of pan-European programs. Uh, for example, Pampers uh, has, a team, has teamed up with UNICEF to, uh, uh, when you buy a pack of pa Pampers, a, a vaccination against maternal tetanus is given. Mm -hmm. And that's a campaign that has had tremendous success across many European countries. Yeah. So there are cultural uh, differences, uh, but in general, this movement towards engaging uh, one's customers in, uh, in socially, uh, pro-social uh, activities, I believe is growing and yeah. it will continue in Europe. Yeah. So what are the key benefits for companies to use this mm -hmm. as part of their strategy? Uh, the power of this approach is that if you do it correctly, mm. if you think it through correctly, mm. if you find the right uh, partner or program, mm. if you invest in it and put uh, real resources against mm. it, then above and beyond the returns that you might get from any other kind of marketing uh, communications program, there is a halo effect, mm. uh, an effect that's, that raises you in the estimation of many, many people yeah. uh, as a type of company that they want to do business with. Yeah. Uh, that a um, sports marketing, entertainment marketing, or price cut type of marketing just won't do. Yeah. Uh, and that, in addition to being start, smart and strategic on the particular problem being solved, uh, is I think what sets this apart. Yeah. You just mentioned that if you do it correctly, so how can a company make sure that they do it correctly? And, and do you have any cases that show that they choose a wrong course and it end up backfiring I the th effort? I, so. I think that the, um, the problem more often mm -hmm lies in one of two areas. One is that we grow up thinking or liking to think that if you do the right thing, good things will happen to you. Mm. Doing the right thing can be a terrific strategy, but it doesn't give you an excuse for not investing in the program in the same way you would invest in any other. Mm. Just doing something good is not enough. And sometimes these programs are starved for resources yeah. because the, the company will say, well, we're doing this, but we don't really have to say all that much about it. Yeah. Just giving somebody a check is not a program. So that would be number one. The second one, and this is an issue more that I'm more familiar about with in the States, but probably there's issues of this here as well, is there's an expression, no good deed goes unpunished. Okay. When, when, a, when anyone whether it's a friend of ours mm. or a company, makes claims about how they are good, yeah. some people immediately go, hmm, yeah. how good are you really? Yeah. Exactly. And so companies need to do their homework mm. to make sure that they're not being hypocritical, to make sure that they're not uh, being tricky and so people will feel that they're not being authentic or transparent. Yeah. Um, and that is usually the way that a company may, may get in trouble. Yeah. If you are doing a huge campaign saying, we're for the environment, and you have tremendous mm. problems that you haven't been addressing and haven't been clear about, yeah. somebody in the environmental community is gonna raise a flag and say, that, what are they talking about? Yeah. So that's, that's really important. You have to make the proper investment of time, and you need to really do your homework to make sure that your communications are, 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 are transparent, authentic, and not hypocritical. And you have a book coming out? Yes, with you? I have a book called, uh, called Good Works, yes. Marketing and Corporate Social Initiatives that mm. Build a Better World on the Bottom Line. It's coming out in June. Great title. Uh, thank you. <laughs> and, uh, and I have a website called yeah. causemarketingforum.com yeah. that is free for people to inspect, and it mm. has articles, best practices, yeah case studies and all sorts of information that can help people really uh, get a, a good grounding in how to do this properly.
interview for today. I'm here with uh, Mayas Raman from hey. Copyright Citizenship, uh, and you're from the UK. That's right. Yes. The first time in Copenhagen. First time in Copenhagen. Um, it's been really interesting and really cold. Yeah, really uh, cold. But yeah, we do have snow hours. <laughs> <laughs> so today you talked about um, matchmaking. Yeah. Between corporates and non-profit organizations, how do you create a perfect match? I think it's not, you know, rocket science. We we all know what we're looking for in relationships, and I think uh, it's human values that we all kind of value t uh, the most to us. So things like commitment, honesty, openness, mm -hmm. um, a bit of fun, yeah. uh, a long-term relationship. These are things that we value as human beings, and these are things that then customers will understand as well. Yeah. So it's not a huge leap to mm -hmm. go from what we're looking at as individuals mm -hmm. to what corporates and NGOs should look at in terms of developing long-term and effective partnerships as well. In real life, uh, we know that not all relationships end in happy marriage ever after, and there are divorces. Um, so as a company, how can you afford that? Because, I mean, if you are a big brand and if you make one silly mistake and you choose the wrong partner, it may create you know, a very bad uh, yeah. reputation for you. Yeah. How to avoid that? I mean, you know, there's no foolproof, 100% certain way of doing that, but I think it's all about doing research and doing preparation beforehand. You know, really set your objectives out from the start. What yeah. are you trying to achieve? What are you looking for in a partner? Yeah. Question the partnership. You know, it's like asking your friends what they think about your boyfriend. Yeah. Go outside of your organization. Ask them what they think about your potential partnerships. Mm -hmm. Get other people's opinions. Yeah. Look at your potential partner. Look at the charity you want to work with. Yeah. Um, try and understand what their ethos is. Try and understand what their approach to partnerships are. Try and understand the language they use and make sure there's a synthesis between you and them. Yeah. And I think it's by putting in this groundwork, you're kind of trying to give yourself the best results of success. Of course things go wrong, but then it's also how you learn from that. Look at what didn't work and then don't make those mistakes again. Mm. And you should share that process to the public as well. What will you think about that? Because a absolutely, you know, be open, be honest. Um, the public are hugely savvy now. You know, they've woken up to cause-related marketing. I guess we're, we're potentially in a period of distrust. Mm. People are looking for companies to make mistakes. Yeah. So be open and honest. It's very hard to hide things nowadays. Yeah. So I think kind of that openness and honesty, if something goes wrong, yeah. will make it softer for you. Now we talked um, much about you know how um, a corporation should choose a partner you know from an NGO uh -huh. sector, but how about the other way around? Because as an NGO and go out and look for a partnership uh -huh. with a, a corporation, is there any difference about how you should approach it? Um, I think it's uh, it's 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 a very similar uh, thing, and I, I've actually worked on both sides. I've worked on an NGO side and on a corporate yeah. side. Um, it's the same sorts of things. Mm -hmm. Why is the corporate doing what it's doing? You know, what are they trying to achieve out of it? Are you getting value for the partnership? You know, they want to work with you. They want your brand. They want to leverage all the goodwill and all the kindness that's behind you as a charity. Yeah. So make sure you're an equal partner. Make sure it's mutually beneficial for you. Yeah. Um, because there's a lot of corporates who will be out there trying to get what they want exactly. and not really understanding what you want. Yeah. Uh, approach it as an equal. Mm -hmm. You know, It's not a case that they're a donor and you're a recipient and you have to go begging anymore. Mm -hmm. That dynamic has changed. NGOs have power now. Yeah. And I think you know, what I would like to see is NGOs be more forthright in kind of yeah. saying yes or no to partnerships. So from your experiences working with several cases from the UK, uh, how long does it take normally, you know, before a partnership more like, you know, yeah, uh, successful? You, have a, you know, you have to do a lot of work before you can put something public. Um, when I worked on uh, the Pampers UNICEF partnership, now that was miraculously quick, but we still did seven or eight months of work before we went outside with it. I know a lot of other companies doing work now, but you have to get your own house in order first. Mm interrogate the partnership yeah. get your communication right make sure everything's in place so i think you know it's not really a case of quick wins and companies who think it's a case of quick wins are the ones who'll end up in divorce okay. <laughs> now you know <laughs> <laughs> yep all right thank you so yeah. much for this uh, short interview it has great. been a pleasure um, to listen to your that's presentation it's been great thank, thank you very you. much thank you well that's all for me today. Four different interviews from Who Cares Win 2012. And I hope um, you get a lot from all the interviews just like I did by talking to different uh, presenters. 
And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. And uh, also remember to connect with me through Facebook and Twitter. And um, visit our Facebook to get more updates about the trend, uh, about CSR, but also about social in, uh, innovation in general. So thanks for watching and remember to smile and shine. Bye. And talk with um, some of the participants. Please quiet. <laughs>